Hello, you're watching Got Space Game and it's time for DCS in 3 or less. Today we're in the Chinook, showing how to spawn dynamic cargo on an airfield to conduct resupply operations. I'll then show how to carry cargo internally, whether that's dynamically spawned cargo or it's been placed on the map in the mission editor. As always, useful control bindings will be on screen at the end of the video. We've got some cargo barrels next to our helicopter in the mission editor. Let's set up our airfields for dynamic cargo. Click the airfield name, full info, and check dynamic cargo. If you're using this, you'll want to turn off unlimited munitions. I've just left 1,000 Mark 81 bombs in the airfield stock. Using the dynamic cargo system will enable us to draw from this stock and use it to create cargo containers. We can then use those cargo containers to resupply other airfields. I can enable dynamic cargo at the destination airfield in exactly the same way. Let's save and launch the mission. Started the helicopter and we'll command the engineer to lower the ramp. It needs to be all the way open with the little flap extended at the end. Open up the comms menu, select ground crew, then rearm and refuel. Click the cargo loading button on the left side and the plus button to spawn dynamic cargo. We've already got these barrels that we put there in the mission editor and we can load those at any time. But spawning dynamic cargo will draw from the airfield stock Create a cargo object and let you use that to restock another airfield. Let's rename our cargo object and add a quantity of munitions. Finally, we can choose what model we want it to look like. There's no kind of space or weight restrictions on that. The game will currently let you spawn 100 tonnes of jet fuel in an ammo crate, and it'll just weigh what an ammo crate weighs. I tried to keep things appropriate though with this bomb container. Next, I'll add some liquid cargo, slightly different here. I'm going to spawn it as an oil tank. I'll fill it with 20 tonnes of jet fuel and rename it as before. Click OK and we've got our two new cargo containers spawned. We'll click our first cargo in the load menu and click the load button. Now it's on the helicopter. Do the same with the second cargo, remembering that it's first in, last out when it comes to unloading. You can take up to five of the smallest containers but it'll be fewer than that if you're bringing something big like that oil tank. I'll close the loading menu and the rearming menu. Command the engineer to close the cargo ramp. Note that we've got cargo models, which is nice. There's no kind of animation to get them loaded in. They just kind of teleport into the back there. Next we've just got to take off and fly to our destination airfield. Once we're there, we can command the engineer to lower the cargo ramp again, bring up the comms menu, ground crew, rearm and refuel. Select cargo unloading on the right, and you can go ahead and close the rearming window, and click the unload button to unload the cargo in the reverse order that you loaded it. Remember, first in, last out. The airfield will now be restocked with the contents of the helicopter, so other planes can use that in multiplayer for instance. I haven't seen any single player missions use this yet, but I'm sure some will do so. At the moment, only the Chinook can do dynamic cargo, but the Huey, Hind and Hip are all slated for inclusion in the future. I've been Dan, and you've been watching DCS in 3 or less from Got Space Game. Huge thanks to all my Kofi supporters, and if you found this video useful, please subscribe for more 3 minute tutorials on all of your favourite DCS models. 